Brand new intro, brand new set, brand new season. Hello and welcome to week one of the Friday Frenzy. I'm Noah, he's Matt. And John reiterated numerous times that leaving Ohio was a very tough decision. In fact, when he looked at the pros and cons of coming here to Illinois, there was one con having to say goodbye to his team at Ohio. Tell you what, nothing like a good comeback story, whether it's Rudy, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, or the great 2014 odyssey of Riley O'Toole, the senior quarterback has gone from backup to poster boy. A little over 90 minutes will tip off here at Assembly Hall. It's going to be tough to top what happened last time we were here when fans rushed the court after that guy down there, Tyler Griffey, hit the game-winning layup as time expired. Yeah, what a thrilling finish, Don. Uh, we were watching the end of that game uh, from the locker room tunnel. And next to us was Nebraska head coach Tim Miles. He was watching it too, pacing back and forth, biting his nails. First year head coach Mike Popovich, kind enough to take some time out of his pregame routine to join us. I have butterflies, coach, and not, I'm not even involved in this game. How do you feel right now? Dallas it is. The Illini will head south to the Cotton Bowl for a showdown against Louisiana Tech and the Zagsbys. Heart of Dallas Bowl. <laughs> He's out. He's out. That's three. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was not a strike. That was low inside, first of all. It's where it crosses the plate, not where it lands. And it crossed, I know it landed. It, and it crossed the plate right in the middle. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. We're up two to one. Yeah. We just kind of found our stroke there. How do you feel? Jacob's a really good goaltender. I mean, you have to really try to fake him out. You have to hit the corner to get it in, and luckily it hit the corner there. So. Leading off the sports cast with the Bears, and if Bears fans could speak to Jay Cutler right now, some of them might say something like this. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. You go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself. Cutler with a monster game in the Georgia Dome. Standing next to me right here is Joseph Bertrand. He had a big game, 10 points, seven rebounds. Joseph, you told me beforehand, this is probably the biggest win of your career. Oh yeah, definitely. Is this loss the final blow to Coach Weber's career at the University of Illinois? There's a good chance we could find out next week. Mike Thomas likes to make decisions quick, judging from his past decisions with Ron Zook and Joel Law. Well, I got to tell you, your soul of an Oak Valley Redskins, they have a chance to clinch a playoff spot here tonight for the first time since 2001. Since which was 2001. Year, right? But you have a prediction for tonight. Well, obviously the key to this game is going to be whoever well, can hold on. I'm saying going to win. I, I disagree. I think it's going to be a close game, but I'm going with Sean Streety's Bulldog. Well, uh, Fred Cross, I'm Noah Newman reporting live from beautiful Solomon <laughs> High School. Hey, stay warm, guys. Fighting Illini were in Lincoln, Nebraska tonight for their Big Ten opener against the 21st-ranked Cornhuskers. Illinois came in a 21-point underdog in this one, and that was before we learned Wes Lunt wasn't going to start. Yes, the Rochester native out with a leg injury. That means Riley O'Toole got the start for the first time since 2012. Nebraska got the ball first, which meant Amir Abdullah got the ball first. The future pro goes 12 yards to the house. 7-0 Nebraska, less than two minutes into the game. A minute after that, Josh Ferguson says, Amir who? 41-yard sprint to the end zone, 7-7. Seven seven. Later, third and goal inside the five. O'Toole trying to make something happen. Referee's in our way. Oh, there's O'Toole. Oh, no. Throws an interception. That is a costly turnover. Fast forward, second quarter. Guess who? Abdullah. Touchdown. 14-7 Cornhuskers, then later, guess who? Abdullah on the option, dives in. He had 196 rushing yards in the first half. There you go, look at you. Okay, that's very good. Beautiful, with Kurt's help, once very again. Good. Very good, very <laughs> Woo! The reverse. I know he can do that. Listen to the crowd. <laughs> Before we got on camera here, you said you don't know how to drive a stick. Oh, you're and right. And I'm really interested to figure out how you're going to I've never driven it. stick. Ne never in my life. Uh, we are here at Walter Boyd Field for our game of the week. Classic Macon County clash. Classic rivalry game. St. Teresa, who just arrived. They just walked around the field in their shirts and ties, the Bulldogs did. And the Merle Forsyth Trojans warming up as we speak. And i got to tell you, in terms of the weather, the temperature has dropped at least 10 to 15 degrees within the past hour. I mean, we got here and it felt like it was about 95 to 100 degrees. Right now it feels more like 70. Most likely be a side-by-side -side finish. 
so this will probably be the fastest the fastest fifth mile has ever looked and you're racing tonight tell me about the race you're racing in yeah well we've got the two biggest divisions. all right he is kenny wallace kenny thanks for joining us and hey thanks. this is not sold out coming out here thirty dollars for adults five dollars for kids gates are open racing gets underway at seven o'clock why not claw their way back kendrick nunn for three they close the half on a 23 to 6 run so they only trail by four points at the break second half it was back and forth tracy triple got it Illinois up 62 to 61, their first lead since leading 2 0. They would lead by four, but they let it slip through their fingers like that pass. And there goes Marble finishing it off. Hawkeyes ice it with free throws. 81 74, Iowa snaps an 11 game losing streak in Champaign, handing Illinois their seventh straight loss. The sport of curling continued to see a rise in popularity during these Winter Olympics. It's certainly one of the more unique sports you'll see. And as I recently found out, it's not as easy as it looks. Signing the waiver here, so if I break an ankle or anything yep. or yep. fall on my face, you guys aren't liable. What's the date today? In February. the small town of Triumph stands one of Illinois' biggest uh, gems, the Waltham Curling Club, the oldest curling club in the state. It's been here since 1884. They used to play out on ponds, and uh, we actually got some pictures of when the ice got uh, frosty and melted apart, the uh, guys fell through the ice, actually curling, so. Wow. Jim Thompson wasn't around in those days, but he has been curling here since he was in diapers. My uh, grandparents did this, my dad, my parents have done this, so I guess I'm a third generation kind of guy. Jim's an Illinoisan, but there's people from all over the globe that come here to curl. It's hard to believe people from Scotland and uh, Canada and Wisconsin, all over the place that come over and participate. That includes an Olympian. Debbie McCormick, she plays uh, third for the women's team. Uh, she's been down here numerous times. Chances are you've seen the sport on TV. It's good, it's good. Some call it shuffleboard on ice. The game starts with throwing a stone towards the target area. And let me tell you, these stones are heavier than you think. Yep, 42 pounds of granite made over in Scotland, shipped over, hardest, hardest stuff you can find. Next comes the really hard part, sweeping. Makes the rock go further. You're actually polishing the ice, uh, getting rid of the frost. Sweeping to me, you get more of a workout in your upper body because you do that during the game and you're, you're exhausted. You'll wake up the next day uh, thinking you got hit by a cement truck. Each team gets eight throws. The goal is to get your stones closest to the center of the target. Now, of course, Jim makes all this look easier than it really is. Here's what it looks like when a beginner does it. Oh, I can see, I can see how you can pull a croy muscle doing this real quick. Kind of embarrassing, yes, I know. But in the world of Waltham, there's really no such thing as making a fool out of yourself. It's a gentleman's sport, so to speak. You know, there's really no trash talking out on the ice. Everybody, if somebody makes a nice shot, they congratulate them. I was feeling pretty good towards the end of my throwing there. Do you think I'm a natural? I mean, do, you th do I have the, could you see me having a future in this sport? Why not, man? The more the merrier. Everybody's got their own form. It's what they got to do to be comfortable throwing a stone. So, hey, keep practicing. You'll be maybe the next Olympian. You never know. <laughs> While redshirting his first year in Champaign, Nathan Shieldhouse watched Juice Williams become the first player in school history to pass the 10,000 yard mark. Tough act to follow, but by the end of Nathan's first season, there was no doubt he was more than capable. Shieldhouse became a household name. He ran for over 800 yards, threw for over 1,800, and most importantly, he won, leading Illinois to its first bowl victory in over a decade. Oh, are you kidding me? All of a sudden, we're a force to be reckoned with, um, and hopefully everybody recognizes that, and we're really looking forward, for us young guys, we're looking forward to next year. The momentum carried into his sophomore season. Illinois started 6-0, but they finished 0-6, costing Ron Zook his job. You know, it wasn't every day that we walked in feeling uh, great about what was going on, great about uh, you know, what we had to do for the day. But Shieldhouse would break out of the sophomore slump and lead Illinois to a victory in the Kraft Fight Hunger Bowl, sending Vic Koning out on top and becoming just the second quarterback in Big Ten history to win a bowl game in his first two seasons. I think we always look back on the bowl victories as uh, you know, two of the biggest highs that um, you know, we had here at Illinois. With a coaching change came a rebuilding project. Wins have been few and far between over the last two seasons. A rough stretch in which many would fold, but not Nathan. There's times when you want to look at the big picture and times you want to um, look at the final goal and end goal. And there's times where you definitely just want to focus on each day. And, uh, we, we just got to do things as a team to make sure that we're getting better, that we're doing the best we can each day. 
Last week, he helped Illinois snap their 20-game conference losing streak, and in the process, he became the second player in school history to reach the 10,000-yard mark, forever linking him to his predecessor. He was able to put up a lot of numbers here, and, and to say that I'm even, you know, in the same, you know, I guess categories as him on some of those numbers is, is an unbelievable feat. It's something all for sure. You know, be excited to look back on it and tell my kids someday, and uh, I'm sure they'll probably think it's a, a whole lot of yards and, you know, wonder when I'm not as athletic at that point how the heck I even did it. And when his future kids hear about their father's career, there's a good chance they'll hear just as much about what he did off the field than on it. There's not many Nathan Shieldhouses out there. You know, I was blessed enough to coach on a national championship team that had a Heisman winner. There's not many days in shield houses out there. The time is ticking and, uh, you know, the clock is about to strike midnight on, you know, my career and, and the rest of these seniors' careers here at, at Illinois. And uh, it's just a, a surreal feeling.